The Cyclist, by Eric Rode, 1755. Read by Annika J. Gandhi. Continued. Chapter 11, A Fateful Night. Scene 53, Ponty. Carlo took a brief pause, as though he were preparing himself for an emotional roller coaster. Ponty refreshed our espresso cups and brought out some delicious pastries. After a bit of small talk, Carlo resumed his story. Alex devoured his pastries in one bite, eager to hear what lay ahead in this captivating tale. Carlo continued, leading us into the next phase of his narrative. The evening began under clear skies, with Carlo and Ponty looking forward to a delightful evening together. Carlo had prepared a sumptuous meal, and the table was set with care. Candles flickered, casting a warm, romantic glow over the room. Carlo, with a loving smile, Ponty, mi amor, everything is ready. Our evening together is going to be wonderful. Ponty, her eyes sparkling with affection, Carlo, you always know how to make everything perfect. I'm looking forward to this evening. As they savored their meal, laughter and shared stories filled the room. The years had deepened their connection, and their love was a beacon of light in the encroaching darkness. They cherished each moment, knowing that their bond was something truly special. However, as the evening progressed, an unexpected storm began to brew outside. Dark clouds gathered on the horizon, and lightning flashed in the distance, heralding the approaching tempest. The wind picked up, and raindrops began to pelt against the windows. Ponty, her smile fading, Carlo, did you hear that? I think a storm is coming. Carlo, glancing at the window, you're right, Ponty. It seems the weather has taken an unexpected turn. As they continued their meal, the storm outside intensified. Thunder rumbled ominously, and the rain beat against the window panes with increasing ferocity. Unbeknownst to Carlo and Ponty, the telephone cables outside were already beginning to falter under the fury of the storm. Ponty fell silent, and the cottage was suddenly engulfed in stillness. Carlo, unaware at first, continued speaking. It took a few minutes before he noticed that something was amiss. Then, with a gentle voice tinged with concern, Ponty spoke softly, Carlo, pausing briefly before continuing, my chest. It feels tight, like a heavy weight pressing down on me. Carlo, his worry deepening, Ponty, I'm here. Just take slow, deep breaths. It might be the storm making you feel anxious. We'll get through this. As Ponty's discomfort grew, the storm outside mirrored her internal turmoil. Lightning illuminated the room in sudden, eerie flashes, casting long, distorted shadows. The rumbling thunder seemed to echo the pounding of their hearts. Ponty, gasping for breath, Carlo, it's getting worse. I don't know what's happening. Carlo rushed to her side, his concern palpable. It was then, in the midst of Ponty's ordeal, that the telephone cables outside succumbed to the storm's fury. With a deafening crack, the line went dead. Carlo, attempting to call for help, Ponty, I'll call the doctor. Don't worry. But his efforts were met with silence. The connection had been severed. Ponty, her voice trembling, Carlo, the electricity. It's gone too. As the lights in their cottage flickered and died, plunging them into darkness, Ponty's chest pain had escalated into an ordeal of agony. Each breath she drew was a Herculean effort, a painful reminder of her frailty. The once warm and comforting atmosphere of their cottage had transformed into a battleground where every gasp for air was a struggle against the tempest both inside and outside. Carlo, holding on to Ponty, his own heart racing, Ponty, hold on. I won't let you go through this alone. I'll find a way to get help, even in this storm. The storm raged on, its fury unabated, as Carlo clung to his beloved Ponty in the pitch black darkness. In their world of chaos, uncertainty, and pain, their love remained the one constant, shining like a beacon of hope amidst the tempest. Scene 54, Pain In this moment, the past surged forth, vivid and visceral as the present. 
Carlo's own youthful days, when his agile legs and a trusty bicycle were the village's lifeline, flooded his consciousness. He recalled the nights he'd pedaled ferociously through rain and darkness to fetch the doctor for his ailing relatives. It was an era when his bicycle's wheels spun not only across rugged terrain but also through the corridors of time. Carlo said, Ponti, mi amor, try to breathe, try to take shallow breaths. I'm here with you, always. Ponti, with her shivering voice, replied, Carlo, it hurts. It hurts so much. Carlo said, I know, my dear, I know. We'll get through this. Just hold on to me, and keep breathing. We'll make it. The words were a lifeline, whispered in the darkness. Their hands were tightly interlocked, a tangible manifestation of their unbreakable bond. Carlo's voice, though filled with fear, carried a note of unwavering determination. He was not willing to let the storm claim his beloved Ponty. As the minutes stretched into what felt like hours, the storm outside showed no sign of relenting. Raindrops hammered the roof like a cacophony of drums, and the thunder rumbled like an angry god. Yet, amidst this chaos, Carlo and Ponty clung to each other with a fierce love that defied the elements. Ponty, whispering through tears, asked, Carlo, do you think, do you think we'll make it through this night? Carlo, his voice filled with conviction, replied, Yes, Ponty. We'll make it. We've weathered many storms in our life together, and we'll weather this one too. I won't let anything happen to you. Ponty, with a faint smile, said, You've always been my protector, my love. Carlo's heart swelled with love for the woman who had been his partner through every storm life had thrown their way. He leaned in and placed a gentle kiss on her forehead, an act of tenderness amidst the chaos. Carlo added, And I always will be, Ponty. I always will be. The candle's feeble light flickered in tandem with the storm outside, casting eerie, dancing shadows that seemed to mirror the turbulence of their emotions. In that moment, as the rain drummed against the window panes and the wind howled like a mournful spectre, Carlo and Ponti were locked in a battle against the forces of nature and mortality. Carlo's gaze never left Ponti's face, even though it was barely visible in the dimness. He could hear her shallow, labored breaths, each one a painful reminder of her deteriorating condition. Her grip on his hand was vice-like, as if she feared that letting go would mean losing her anchor in the midst of the storm. His own heart raced, mirroring the tempest outside, as he whispered words of comfort and reassurance to his wife. Each word was a prayer, a plea to whatever higher power might be listening to spare her from this torment. It was a moment when the fragility of life hung in the balance, when the bonds of love were tested by the merciless elements. In that darkened room, illuminated only by the wavering candlelight, Carlo and Ponti cling to each other. They were two souls, weathering the storm not just of the night, but of a lifetime spent together. And as the tempest raged on, it seemed to mirror the tempest within their hearts, a tempest that threatened to extinguish the flickering candle of hope. Scene 55, Fetch the Doctor Desperation hung heavy in the air. Carlo knew that the doctor was their only hope, but nature's fury had rendered their means of communication useless. The telephone lines were down, and the road to the doctor's house was treacherous, a maze of mud and rain. With a heavy heart and trembling hands, Carlo made the decision. He had to go for the doctor, no matter the odds. Ponty's life was hanging by a thread, and he couldn't bear the thought of losing her. Carlo stepped into one of the dimly lit outside rooms, where the storm's chill embraced him. The contrast between the warmth of their home and the harshness of the elements was stark. He knew the journey would be arduous, and the odds were stacked against him, but he had no other choice. And then, as if a sign from the heavens, he saw it, an old bicycle, forgotten and gathering dust. It was his son Angelo's bicycle, a relic of the past. Its wheels, once symbols of youthful adventures, had now grown rusty with time. Carlo's determination burned like a fire within him. He would ride that bicycle through the relentless storm, 
covering the grueling 20-mile distance to reach the doctor. It was a perilous plan, fraught with risks, but he couldn't let fear hold him back. Ponty's life depended on his courage and determination. As Carlo prepared to embark on his perilous journey through the storm, he turned to Ponty, their faces illuminated by the soft glow of the candle. Carlo's voice trembling with concern, Ponty, I have to go. The doctor is our only hope now. I can't let you suffer like this. Ponty's voice weak but determined, Carlo, my love, be safe out there. I'll be here praying for your safe return. Carlo leaned down and gently kissed Ponty's forehead before bracing himself for the unforgiving weather outside. As he opened the door, a gust of wind and rain rushed in, making the candle's flame dance wildly. As he wheeled the old bicycle onto the rain-soaked road, every drop of rain felt like a slap on his face, every gust of wind a challenge to his resolve. The path ahead was shrouded in darkness, with only the dim candlelight from their window serving as a beacon of hope. Carlo's heart pounded in his chest as he pedaled furiously through the rain and wind. Each rotation of the bicycle's wheels was a battle against the elements, a proof to his unwavering love for Ponty. The storm raged around him, but he was a solitary figure, determined to defy the odds. In the distance, thunder rumbled like a warning, and lightning streaked across the sky, briefly illuminating the treacherous path ahead. Carlo's thoughts were focused solely on Ponty, on reaching the doctor in time to save her. Scene 56. Prayers. Back inside the cottage, Ponty held the candle close, her eyes closed in fervent prayer. She whispered words of comfort to herself, Carlo will make it, he has to. Carlo's journey through the storm was a relentless battle against nature. Every pedal stroke felt like an eternity, and he could feel his muscles straining with the effort. The rain drenched him completely, and his attire adhered to his form as if it had become a part of him. As he pushed forward, he couldn't help but think of Ponty. He imagined her sitting by the candle's flickering light, her hands folded in prayer. The image of her face, filled with love and concern, spurred him on. Back at the cottage, Ponty's prayers continued. Her whispered words were like a lifeline connecting her to Carlo in the midst of the tempest. Ponty, her voice filled with hope. Carlo, my Lao, you can do it. Please, Virgin Mary, watch over him. Carlo's journey through the storm seemed interminable. He pedaled with all his might, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The rain showed no mercy, and the wind howled like a banshee. In that moment, as he stood on the drenched road, his clothes clinging to his body, Carlo felt a sense of despair wash over him. The enormity of the task he had set for himself weighed heavily on his shoulders. Doubt crept in, whispering in his ear that he was fighting a losing battle. He paused, his breath ragged, and looked deep inside himself. It was as if time itself slowed down, and his entire life flashed before him like a series of flickering images. He saw moments of joy and laughter, times of sorrow and hardship, and the countless experiences that had shaped him into the man he had become. Carlo's hands, trembling from exhaustion and the cold, tightened on the bicycle's handlebars. He considered giving up on this noble quest, on this desperate ride through the storm to save Ponty. It seemed impossible, and he questioned whether he had the strength to continue. The rain continued to pour, the storm raging around him, but within Carlo, there was a tempest of emotions. He grappled with his decision, torn between the desire to reach the doctor and the overwhelming odds stacked against him. The torrential rain fell relentlessly, an unyielding force in Carlo's world. He had made very little progress on his journey, with the elements proving to be overwhelming adversaries. His determination had carried him only as far as the main road, a mere fraction of the distance he needed to cover to reach the doctor. In that moment, as the rain soaked him to the bone and the road stretched ahead like an endless abyss, Carlo was once again overwhelmed by a profound sense of desperation, nearly suffocating him with paralysis. The Cyclist, by Eric Rode, 
1755. Read by Annika J. Gandhi.